In this video I'll be demonstrating the Zeus IDE and in particular I'll be focusing on some of the features, some of the way it supports the Go programming language. Um, here's a typical one file Go program. Um, so one of the first things you'd notice is that it actually can do autocomplete for Go and it does that using Go code. So if I was to bring up the uh, autocomplete for the format package the Go code gives me a list of all the functions available. Um, so IntelliSense is driven by Go code. Um, it, another nice feature is the Go imports. Uh, if I was to restructure this code as, as shown and then try and do a save of that file, it'll run Go imports on the file and restructure it as per the Go standard. As you would, it added missing uh, packages. It also removes unwanted packages. So if I actually was to add some unwanted packages, uh, do a file save, it had removed the files and packages. Now both of those features are configured into the editor using macros. So like most things in Zeus, it's all fully configurable. You can add or remove things as you like, change things as you like. But this is the stock standard default installation that uh, that you get if you install the package as is. It comes with some default configuration for the, for the language, but there's nothing stopping you changing it. On that topic, one of the things that can get confusing is that the configuration is attached to the file extension. So if you look at this particular case, we've got a Go file that's active. And right over here, we've We've got a thing called templates, which I'll get to in a minute, but these are the templates that are specific to Go, in particular, specific to the Go document type. If I actually change to another type of file, in this case a text file, I change the document type that's currently active, I change the templates that are available. And you can see that it's the same thing applies for the macro, so these are the things that are actually um, file specific macros and templates and tools. And so there's a whole bunch of things that are actually specific um, to the file that you're editing at the moment. And the editor will dynamically change depending on what file is active. Um, so let's let's consider these templates. These templates are just uh, simple little code snippets that um, you can configure so that you makes them easier to, to, to type in. So here, for example, here's a for i loop. Um, let's, uh, here's a for loop, a stock standard for loop. Um, and here's a, here's a for range loop. Now, uh, the structure and what is actually displayed is, is fully configurable. Um, you can add or remove as many of these as you like. Um, it, it, it's uh, really up to you. Um, the other thing to notice is if I hover over it, it, it tells me there's a trigger attached to the to the template. So you can actually, rather than having to click on them over there, you can just use the trigger. So if we look at the triggers, there's an FOI, FOR, and an FR. So rather than having to go click, click with the mouse, here's our FOI trigger, here's our FOR trigger, and here's our... FR trigger. So again, you can configure those how how you how you, to suit basically. But the whole idea is it just means that you don't have to. It can reduce the amount of typing you need to do. So for example, here's the OIF statement. It'll automatically do whatever it, it'll do whatever it's been defined to do based on the template. Um, and as, and once again, yes, like that you can actually remove all the templates or you can change them. It, it's up to you. Up to you, the user. Um, so that's that's just basic, uh, some basic features. Um, there's also support for workspaces, so you can actually build up workspaces um, that contain multiple files. Um, but I'm not going to go into that just yet. There is actually a few macros that actually let you construct Go workspaces. Um, I think they were been covered in one or two of the other videos. Um, but I won't, I'm not going to go into that detail just yet. I, I, I'm going to have a look at the package handling macros that have been added, some of the enhancements. 
let's consider this um, simple main.go file. This code was borrowed from this from this web web link, and basically it's a it's a Go file, but a Go a bit of Go code that will actually query Reddit using its API to get the latest information. So I just copied and pasted this into a little file. If I try and compile this, now this is assuming you have the Go compiler installed and correctly set up because uh, Zeus doesn't come with Go. You need to install that yourself. But if it is installed and correctly configured, it can use it. So in this particular case, Zeus is going to run the Go compiler that's installed and try and compile the file. And naturally, it's missing a package because I didn't download the package. So one of the new macros that's been added is the ability to actually get this package. So if I go to the package menu and I try and, well, firstly, let's try and locate it in the drives panel. So just to double check that it's not there. And sure enough, this is the drives panel and it can't find it in that panel. Um, there's, you can also try and open it in Explorer. Again, it can't find it, so, which is not a surprise since it's not there. Um, but let's use the macro to actually get it and install it. So if we run that macro, it, you can see it's running the go, go, go get command down the bottom. And there you go. It's actually gone away to GitHub and, and installed it. So now if we try and locate it in the drives package, uh, locate in drives. Sure enough, there it is. So it's now added it to the drives folder. Naturally, I can now also go and compile it. And this time it's compiled successfully. I can actually also run this in the playground using another macro, which will actually just execute it. And off it goes, it's running. And it's come back with too many requests. I think it's because I ran it prior and uh, the Reddit API is actually throttling me and saying I've requested too many times, or maybe that's too many people are requesting it. Let me try one more time. There we go. So now there you go. There's there's the uh, edit uh, information coming back from Reddit as per the API, as per the code. Um, a couple of other nice new macros that have been added is um, information on that package. So if I actually wanted to bring up information on that package, I've selected, but let's do this again. Here's our package that we're interested in. I'll bring up the package. I'll bring up the information for it. And sure enough, there's the package information for it. Um, so all of these macros are um, user configurable. Um, these are just the stock standard ones that come with the editor. Uh, and you can add as many or you can remove as many. And there, there's, there's just plenty of information there to get you started. You can actually get information on a package in a function and so on and so forth. Um, but all of this stuff is done through macros. So it's, it's fully configurable. Um, uh, one thing I forgot to mention is you, because uh, the, way, the way Zeus works, it has, um, it, it tags, it has a tagging feature. Um, and part of the standard installation is, is a tags database for um, the Go 1.6 release. So if I was to actually, if I was actually interested in finding out how this log fatal is coded, I could just select the word fatal and I go go to definition. And sure enough, there it is. It's, it's actually located the code for that particular function. So. It has code navigation as well. Uh, it naturally, it works for this one as well. Um, this this obviously comes in through this package here. So if I do a go to definition on that, there it is there. So you can navigate your code base um, quite easily um, using the go to definition feature of the of the editor. And I think, in fact, I think that's actually done through go def um, because I think you'll find that that's probably configured through one of these macros. But once again, everything in this, um, everything is configurable via the macroing layer. Uh, and what, what you're basically seeing here is the, the default configuration as it, as it is when it comes out of the installer. So straight out of the box, this is what you get. But 
you can make it do whatever you like by just configuring or changing the macros and adding macros, removing macros. Uh, it, you can change it to suit. Um, as a final point, the, one of the newer features is support for the Delve debugger. Um, so let's assume that we actually, um, for those uh, familiar to Go, they'll know that GDB doesn't really support Go very well, but there's a new debugger called Delve, which does a much better job. Um, and so we'll, we'll demonstrate how that works. Let's let's um, here we have our our little simple um, example that we're with. with. Um, let's assume we're trying to debug this. Um, so if I start the debugger, I get the debugger control panel, um, and it's it's using the delve debug command. So right here, I've I've now got delve running. If I bring up the help for that, there's a whole bunch of commands that you can use. But in this particular case, let's say we want to debug this particular function. So if I go right click on there and go to definition again, let's say I want to debug that particular API call. So here we are, here's the API call. Let's put a breakpoint there, I hit the set button over here. I now have a breakpoint there. Um, finally, let's put a breakpoint here as well, just, uh, just for the hell of it. Um, so we've got our breakpoints in place. Let's let's run the continue. And sure enough, here we go. It's gone away to get the JSON. Um, I can look at the response. You know, there's the there's a response header coming back. Um, to to debug that, I I basically you may not have seen it. it. Might have been a bit quick. You just put the cursor on a particular variable and hit the print print statement. I can look at the locals. Um, I can look at the stack, and so on and so forth. Um, so it, it's it, it's it's not the most seamless integration to the debugger, but it's it is actually integrated to an extent. One of the nice features, and right here, if I hit in continue, it's hitting this for loop, and I can actually again print this for variable, this item variable. Uh, and there's the item that it's, it's printed right there. Uh, one of the nice things, um, it does actually remember the, um, the it does actually remember its breakpoints. So if I do a restart, for example, or if I actually just shut down the debugger, um, you can see the breakpoints have gone. If I do a debugger start again, it remembers the breakpoints that it had set. So it just means you don't have to reset and set breakpoints continually. Um, and it does a much better job than the GDB. It, both the, the Zeus will actually work with GDB as well, but um, unlike uh, GDB, Delve actually does seem to be able to print variables and understand the structure of the Go code. Um, but that's just a new feature. That was the Delve support was added in this version. Um, and that's basically it. That's, that's a, a little quick demo into how Zeus supports, uh, how Zeus, the, the stock standard installation for Zeus, uh, what sort of features you get with regard to the Go programming.